Was Einstein's brain different from yours? Pathologist Thomas Harvey stole the brain of Albert Einstein. After performing the autopsy in 1955 and determining that the distinguished scientist died of an abdominal aortic aneurysm. After that, a whole story was opened halfway between the truculent and extreme scientific curiosity. There were many who wanted to know what was the secret of his genius. Others did not welcome the act of theft. Nevertheless, the results of the analysis that were carried out later were more than revealing, completely breaking the expectations of more than one neurologist. Albert Einstein was not only a brilliant physicist, he was also something else, an icon, a media figure, and of great social impact. He knew it, and as he knew, being aware of it, he gave very precise guidelines on what he wanted for himself after his death, discretion and privacy. He wanted to be cremated and his ashes scattered in a river. Only after he had done this, he could announce to the media his death. But Einstein was not hurt at all. Nobody had an unplanned and almost unimaginable factor, Thomas Harvey. This pathologist was done with the brain of Albert Einstein after his autopsy. Harvey were a very big fan of Einstein. But it was also known by some that his character ranged from imbalance, more elusive introversion, and obsessive meticulousness about science. The first thing that happened was obvious. He lost his job. The scientific community pointed out harshly, criticized, and sanctioned him. His promising career in Princeton was frustrated. A short time later, his wife abandoned him. His action and the rugged act of keeping a brain hidden in a basement did not seem logical or even less pleasant. A depressed Harvey finally found encouragement to continue his fascination with this controversial investigation. This was thanks to Hans Albert, Einstein's son. When Harvey revealed to Hans about the brain, Hans was outraged. However, after a little reflection, I reached the following conclusion. If the analysis of that brain would serve as something for the scientific community, the family approved. Everything is for the sake of science. Thomas Harvey's work could go on until he eventually found those who did the studies whose result he was eager to see. The results on the study of the brain of Albert Einstein. The result of Albert Einstein's brain analysis were happening between 1975 to the present. Time after Hans Albert's permission, the outlook for Harvey changed. Many people were suddenly interested. His calls reigned, interviews, and moments, even fame. Journalists camped in their garden. Science Magazine was in contact with him, as well as the best neuroanatomists in the world. The 240 blocks and 12 games of 200 slides that Harvey had created by dividing the brain of Albert Einstein began to give results. Now Albert Einstein's brain had become the most desired brain in the world. The first thing that caught the attention of Albert Einstein's brain was its size. It was smaller than usual. This shocked the half-scientific community. The expectations were other. In 1985, the University of California, Berkeley, published its results. The samples were on the glial cells. These brain bodies act as support or support for neurons and participate in the cerebral processing of information. And what did the studies reveal? That Albert Einstein had fewer glial cells, but they were larger. But the problem with this observation is that it occurred in only one fragment analyzed, missing dozens more. In 1996, the University of Alabama, Birmingham, published a paper on the prefrontal cortex of Einstein. They discovered that this part of the brain responsible for spatial cognition and mathematical thinking was more developed. In 2012, anthropologist Dean Falk studied the photos of Albert Einstein's brain. What he identified was amazing. The nuclear physicist had one more crest in his middle frontal lobe. Normally, we all have three, but Einstein had an extra. According to experts, this area is related to planning and working memory. This could explain how Einstein works but not something much more complex like his genius. His parietal lobes were asymmetrical. In addition, it presented what is known as the omega sign in this area. This characteristic is related to the musicians who play the violin and who are also left-handed. Like Einstein, although he was usually seen writing and playing violin with his right, he was actually left-handed, only corrected at an early age. In 2013, the corpus callosum was examined. Dean Falk, the aforementioned anthropologist, discovered that it was thicker than normal. This would have allowed him to have better communication between his cerebral hemispheres. This could have favored him in understanding, managing and elaborating complex ideas and relating them to each other. Everything indicates that although Albert Einstein's brain was not larger than that of a normal adult male, but it was structured in a different way that made it unique. 
In addition, the researchers discovered abnormalities in Einstein's parietal lobes. These lobes intervene in symbolic thinking, language skills, mathematical reasoning, and spatial orientation. Perhaps they provide some of the neurological basis for Einstein's visuopatial and mathematical skills, the publication notes. These important characteristics of Einstein's brain show a restructured brain in a different way than the average, and it is that Einstein was a very versatile individual. Einstein was not only a physics genius, he was able to speak different languages, play different instruments, and, as many suspect, he could even have Asperger's syndrome. All this outlined in him a singular brain, often but sophisticated and highly specialized. After Harvey's death, his heirs donated in 2010 the material that was left of Einstein to the National Museum of Health and Medicine that the U.S. Army. It has in Maryland. Among that material were 14 photographs of Einstein's brain taken from different angles, and that until now had not been published. This means that there are fragments of Einstein's brain that never appeared. I hope you learned something new today. If you still have some questions left, let us know in the comment section below. If you want to know top 10 magic tricks, click on the video given on your screen. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.